Hi everyone, it's Chris. Welcome or welcome back to Gardening at the Simon Getty North. Have you planted a fall garden? How's your summer garden doing? Today I'm going to show you my fall garden and what's left of my summer garden. It's a beautiful day here at the Simon Getty in Sterling, Michigan. I'm in hardiness zone 5A. So some of my stuff is still a little bit behind. I still have very small peppers, if any at all, and where I've heard, you know, just about 45 minutes away, um, a friend of mine, she's had peppers galore, and she's pretty much done with her peppers. So um, I don't know what's going on up here. My peppers are definitely very slow this year. My tomatoes still have a lot of green tomatoes. My, some of them are, have pretty heavy blight. So I've been trying to just, you know, save whatever I have left and get those tomatoes ripened. Let's go show you uh, my garden. So here, this is a cedar crest uh, raised garden planter that I purchased from Amazon. It was very easy to put together. All you needed was a screwdriver or a drill. And the legs here, all these sideboards go into these slots. And you slide them in, and then you put in these bottom um, panels in the bottom of the planter and screw the first three of them in. You have this, like, tent frame and then you can bolt that down on here and this is a really nice cover for fall gardening and you can put it down and it'll help protect from the frost and you know heavy cold so I'll leave a link in the description box if you're interested in something like this it's very nice quality it's redwood cedar that's sustainably sourced out of Canada it's untreated so it's very nice and it was pretty reasonable as well for the little bit of assembly that you had to do but um, I'm very happy with this planter it's very nice so what I have in here I actually have some wax beans I still have one seed that I'm still trying to get to germinate but I have these are the green beans here I have two and then I have a wax bean in the back here. I have um, turnips, the seeds that I planted. I planted them earlier this week on September 9th. I have a Market Express turnip. I have a radish, which is a cherry bell, carrots, mashi, which is a corn salad, arugula, spinach, the Southern Giant Curled Mustard, and a Gourmet Baby Greens. So these are all cold weather crops. And I have actually 10 different crops in there that you can still plant in September and harvest before winter. Also in front here, that will also be part of the fall gardening are my Brussels sprouts. As you can see, they're just barely starting. And luckily for me, that these can be harvested even in the winter, after it's snowed even, actually. They're very cold tolerant, frost tolerant, and um, I think the one on the end may have what they call um, club root, because it's just not growing right. And if you look down towards the bottom, you know, these may even have it a little bit as well, but that far um, one on the end, I think may have it. It's just growing kind of funky. But so I actually trimmed these up uh, this morning because I heard that will help with getting the Brussels sprouts to start growing. So hopefully I'm not too far behind on that. And uh, We'll uh, keep an eye on those. So this here is the Utah celery. That looks like it's getting ready to be harvested. 
the remainder of the summer garden. It actually grew pretty good. I've never grown celery before. I'm thinking these leaves would be good in uh, Bloody Marys. Here is my red cabbage. That'll also be part of the fall gardening. Here are my cherry tomatoes. There's still a lot of green ones on here. And there's some red. Harvested some. And I have a grape tomato plant next to it. Those are pretty. They don't really look like the grape tomatoes, though. They just look like large cherry tomatoes. These are the super sauce tomatoes, the ones that are seedless and are supposed to grow up to two pound fruits each. Well, I'm not sure if any of them got to two pounds each. I'll have to um, weigh one in a little bit. But um, this tomato plant has gotten blight pretty bad, so I'm just trying to get it through to get my tomatoes ripened up so I can make maybe a marinara sauce with it. The other thing that I've done, I recently found out tomatoes are a perennial. So I've taken a clipping of this plant, the grape tomato, the cherry tomato, and the beefsteak of suckers that had no blight on them, and I have them indoors uh, trying to root them. So I'll show you how that turns out. Um, if it turns out, <laughs> I'll do a video on that as well. Yeah, I'm trying to, my tomatoes are very behind. Last year I was already canning tomatoes and I haven't gotten enough to can anything for tomatoes yet. How are your tomatoes? I bet you they're already done. These are my sweet potatoes. I have a video of how I started these in 15 gallon pots and also a video on how to grow sweet potato slips. I had started the sweet potato slips indoors and then I uh, put these in, in this pot, and these won't be ready to harvest till about the first weekend in October. So I will do a video when we harvest the sweet potatoes because I've never grown sweet potatoes before. And I got the idea from um, a couple other YouTube gardening videos, and I thought, you know what, I could probably do it in a 15-gallon pot and I only put like three slips in here and they're doing really good. They're very strong and I can't wait to see what's down there. But um, like I said, we'll do a video on this when it's harvest time and that'll be about the first weekend in October. So here's my watermelon patch. It's doing pretty good. I got a real small one here. I don't know if we're gonna see harvest on this because these are like 95 days for maturity. And I've already harvested a couple that were too soon. They sounded hollow, and that's not the only determining factor. I don't know if you can see this one here. This one's a pretty nice sized one. It's hanging on the fence here, so I can't really pull it too much, but we got some nice sized ones. I'm hoping that they uh, will uh, We'll be able to harvest a couple that are actually ripe, and we'll see how our fall is. We've been having some warm falls, so hopefully this fall we'll extend our growing season and be warm again this year as well. So that'll help the watermelons because they're definitely a warm, loving plant. Can't wait to try it. I did grow these last year, and they were very tasty. There's my seeker squeak. There's my buddy. Here are some poblano peppers. Here's a very small one here. And there's one back here. And some flowers. I had a recent storm about a week and a half ago. And all my corn was laying down on the ground. I tried propping it up. But I just got to the point where I just let it stay where it's at. So I could try to harvest what I could. I started cleaning up all the pumpkin vines. Those two big ones are all rotted out. I'm going to need a shovel or something to get them out of there. So I might just leave them there for now. I got the jack-o'-lantern pumpkins. 
Those are actually sitting on my she shed porch. And actually, those seem to be more pest resistant than these Max pumpkins. These Max pumpkins I discovered seem to be very prone to the squash bugs. And uh, even though the squash bugs, I did find them on the jack o' lantern pumpkins, they didn't seem to bust through them like they did on these Max pumpkins. But the one takeaway that I have this year, you know, because I've grown urban gardening, I haven't really done rural gardening except for last year and this year. I have not dealt with the squash bugs and the Japanese beetles like I've ever have here before. I don't think I've ever dealt with either one of those bugs in my urban garden. That was like a four by eight, four by six raised bed garden. But I wasn't growing pumpkins, I wasn't growing squash. So that could be the difference, but yeah, that was a lot. <laughs> I still have some Roma tomatoes over here. They're about ready for me to make some fresh pico with them. They're getting blight pretty bad too. And those are the beefsteak tomatoes on the end, which aren't very beefy. Spaghetti squash just keeps producing all the time. Finding out I'm not a big fan of spaghetti squash, it's okay. But I like buttercup. And I think we finally have a buttercup squash. That's what I'm talking about. I'm hoping that we have enough time for it to mature so we can harvest it. And look at the spaghetti squash back there. Anybody want some? It sure is a beautiful day here at the Simon Getty. I had to get into some shade. The sun is just pretty relentless today. How's your garden coming? Is your summer garden done? Have you started fall garden? Are you planning on planting a fall garden this year? I just showed you 10 crops that you can still plant in September in hardiness zone 5A that can be harvested before winter. I hope you like my video. Please like, share, and subscribe. And if you haven't become a Simon Getty subscriber, please become a Simon Getty subscriber today. And don't forget that notification bell. That'll let you know when my next video is coming out. Live, love, laugh, and garden. Hope to see you at the next video. God bless.